Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing the intrinsic mechanisms of apoptosis. In our previous video, we discussed apoptosis as an overview, uh, and I highly recommend you check it out on our YouTube channel. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us. So with that being said, let's discuss apoptosis really quickly, and then we'll go on and discuss the mechanisms of apoptosis that you definitely need to know. Apoptosis is also known as cellular suicide. That is something that's commonly referred to, uh, it's commonly alluded to. And one thing to remember about apopto apoptosis is that it requires ATP because it is genetically programmed. You see, this is actually a physiologic physiologic response that can happen in our body, okay? So it can be normal for a cell to die off. It can be caused by abnormal uh, instances it can be caused by pathologic states but the actual mechanism of dying is physiologic now apoptosis can happen where the cell kills itself off or another cell actually induces apoptosis essentially if the cell the the cell that's going to die is either infected that can cause apoptosis it can kill off another cell if that cell is a cancerous precursor or it has gone through uh, metaplasia and it is precancerous that is also an indication for a cell to kill off another cell and the other thing to remember is that apoptosis can involve single cells or a small group of cells but it will never and this is very important to remember it will never involve large groups of cells mainly because large groups of cells dying off is known as cellular necrosis okay that is what a large group of cells dying off is apoptosis is either as a, at a single scale or a small group now examples of physiologic apoptosis normal apoptosis events that happen can be seen throughout our body for example you can see it happening in the endometrium the endometrial lining sheds during menses and this is normal cd8 toxic cd8 cytotoxic t cells uh, mediate cell death in certain cells that are either infected or are precancerous right that's a normal state like we're talking about right there and then embryogenesis also involves apoptosis at many steps of the way. When it comes to apoptosis, we we're saying how it requires ATP, but it also requires functioning caspases enzymes for the, the degradation of the cell itself. And these caspases are the key mediators of apoptosis. They break down the cytoskeleton and they also degrade the DNA by activating endonucleases. And these endonucleases are going to break down DNA. Now, all of this is important. Yeah, you should know the basics, but the main thing you need to take away from all this is that when the DNA is broken up, it results in segments that are 180 base pairs long this is very high yield okay do not forget this because this will come up over and over again high yield stuff you can be tested on this you can be uh given a a, a question where the apoptotic event is alluded to by saying that a researchers found a multiples of a 180 base pairs in the isolate what was the event or what was the mechanism of cell death this is a very sensitive indicator of apoptosis the 180 base pair multiples now cellular membrane is actually not damaged that's very important because when cellular membrane damage occurs the intracellular components are going to be leaked right so it's going to cause intracellular components to be released intracellular intracellular there you go components to leak out and then the leakage of these intracellular components is going to lead to uh, inflammation. As you can see in necrosis, this is what happens. But because this is a small scale event and because the cell membrane remains intact in cellular apoptosis, you are going to see no leakage of intracellular components and no inflammation occurring. That is very important. So with that being said, we're going to now talk about the intrinsic pathway. Remember, there are two pathways. You have the intrinsic and you have the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. The intrinsic pathway actually is involved in tissue remodeling like in embryogenesis. And you can see it with finger development. Uh, the intrinsic pathway plays a huge role in the formation of the finger. This is going to occur 
uh, after exposure to injurious stimuli like radiation or toxins, that can actually lead to DNA or cellular damage. When this occurs, you're going to have the intracellular pathway or the intrinsic pathway get activated and it's going to kill off the cell. And it's regulated by BCL2 family of proteins. This is very high yield. The next part of this lecture is going to be very important because you have to understand what is happening and what this family of or these family of proteins do okay so i'm gonna write this in pretty much font or bold sorry in a bold way high yield h y a f okay this is very high yield stuff do not forget this commit this to your memory it's regulated by the b cell family of proteins and in this family you have pro apoptotic genes uh, where you have the backs or back proteins excuse me not genes but proteins these back or backs proteins are gonna cause apoptosis okay they are pro apoptosis so apoptosis will occur if they are activated or if they are uh, transcribed translated the anti apoptotic proteins in this family are the bcl2 and bclxl uh, proteins these are going to suppress apoptosis from occurring and this is it's not enough just to know that these proteins are present and they are the ones that are playing a huge role in apoptosis and that that's how they're regulated you also need to know what these proteins do and how they function because they're very important and it's something you need to just remember so we're going to talk a little bit more about that right now the backs and back proteins actually are going to form pores in the mitochondrial membrane so we're going to draw this right here let's say this is your mitochondria here okay this is the mitochondria and then you have a cellular membrane right here. All right, what this is gonna do, when you are looking at this portion, okay, you're gonna see the mitochondrial membrane right here, okay? Backs and back are going to attack this part and they're going to create kind of a pore. This is not a channel, but they're gonna create a pore, okay? Well, let's try it like this. And what they have now done is they have created a sort of pore or a channel for cytochrome C to be released from the inner mitochondrial membrane. And from here, it'll go out into the cytoplasm. Okay. So cytochrome C is going to be released from the mitochondrial membrane. This is then going to lead to a downstream effect of activation of caspases and destruction of the cell. Essentially, the way I remembered it is this, the backs, is going to pretty much cause the cell to get axed okay it's gonna get the it's gonna kill the cell and it's all gonna happen at the mitochondrial membrane level where cytochrome c gets released into the cytoplasm activates caspases and destroys the cell bcl2 that gene remember this is the anti-apoptotic gene it actually keeps the mitochondrial membrane impermeable so this is going to block the effects of backs and back it prevents cytochrome C from being released, and because of that, you're not going to have an activation of the caspases. And BCL2 overexpression is actually something that occurs in certain cancers like follicular lymphoma, especially T, the translocation 1418. All of this is important because when BCL2, when you have a increase in BCL2, you are going to have a decrease in cellular death. Okay. And that is very important because usually other cells like cytotoxic T cells cannot act on cells that have an overexpression of BCL2. And when they can't act on those cells to kill them off, essentially you're going to see an increase in that cell proliferating. Cellular proliferation. Okay. And this is going to lead essentially to cancer. So BCL2 overexpression actually is also associated with a decrease in caspase activity and an increase in tumor tumorogenesis, aka the development of cancer. That all makes sense, right? If you are not, uh, if you are overexpressing something that prevents apoptosis, essentially you are going to reduce the release of cytochrome C. And by reducing the release of cytochrome C and in going into the cytoplasm, you are going to get a decrease in activation of the caspases. And that means the cell will not die. 
And with that being said, that is the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if this was helpful, and we'll see you back here real soon.